Hi everybody, I'm Clifton Murphy with FunnyBugBees.com. Welcome back to a new episode. Today we're going to finish up a three-part series on how to make Langster style frames using nothing but a table saw. Today's version or today's video will build the sidebars. Uh, please see video number one and two for top and bottom bars. Stay with us. All right, guys. So today we're going to make medium uh, frame side rails or sidebars. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that out of a piece of scrap. Now we get these cutoffs from a local lumber manufacturer that manufactures molding equipment for free. Uh, they come anywhere from this size to that long. Um, so there's plenty of places out there to find scrap wood. Um, the way that we're going to make these, these are of course 2 by 6s or 2 by 8s. So uh, um, they come finished at about an inch and a half and a frame is an inch and a three-eighths wide. So what we're going to do is take a little off each side and then we're also going to cut them to length. Six and a quarter long is what we need them to be. So let's go ahead and get those cuts done. We'll show you how to rough this up into the general size that we're going to need and then we'll cut our dados, the saw, in the top and the bottom and then slice it into three-eighths of an inch thick pieces and each one of those will become a frame side. So let's get started. So what I've done is I've taken just a piece of scrap lumber, uh, a scrap 2x8, um, which actually, of course, you'll get from the big box store. Uh, it'll be about an inch and a half thick, and it'll be about seven and seven and a half uh, wide. So we're, we've cut that down now uh, to six and a quarter wide and an inch and a three-eighths thick. Uh, which is the final dimension of your frame. After we cut our dados for the upper and lower bars, we'll take and slice this into three-eighths of an inch thick pieces this way, and that'll be our frames. Let's go ahead and get the dados cut. The next thing we're going to do before we get our cuts done is install a three-quarter inch stack dado set into your table saw. Always remember to unplug your table saw whenever you're changing your blade or adjusting its height with a ruler. Short circuits can and will occur in your wall socket and this saw can and will come on without the power button being hit at some point. It is a possibility, it's rare, but please always unplug. We're going to set the depth to 3 eighths of an inch. All right, now we're also going to set up our fence. The first cut that we're going to make is for the top bar groove. Now the top bar groove, of course, um, is going to be a three, or excuse me, a seven eighths inch wide cut um, to accommodate the top bar. Seven eighths is of course an eighth bigger than this blade. So what we have to do is offset our fence and make two passes. I'll show you that now. All right, so our stock, our frames, are an inch and three eighths wide, and we need to cut seven eighths out of the direct dead center of that. So what we need to do, if we subtract seven eighths from an inch and three eighths, that gives us four eighths or a half an inch, which is a quarter inch on each side of the groove. So you set your fence to a quarter of an inch from the inside blade. Now your dado is going to mess up the, the uh, measurement on your ruler if you have one on your fence so you need to measure this manually. 
one quarter of an inch from the fence to the blade. Right there. And then we'll make our first pass. So now that we've made that first pass, we have a quarter of an inch thick piece between the fence and the blade. To do the other side, there's no adjusting needed. Just turn your board around to where the thick side is now against the fence and make your second pass. So after those two cuts, we now have uh, a quarter of an inch on either side of a 7 8 inch groove, and that'll be for your top bar. What we'll do now is set up to make a 3 quarter inch wide cut for the bottom bar, centered on this, on this edge. Once that's done, we'll make a couple of passes to cut out some, so your, uh, the taper, and then we can start slicing them into individual frames. Alright guys, so you'll remember that our stock is uh, 3 8 of an inch thick. Our board is 3 8 of an inch thick. To make a 3 quarter inch groove exactly down the center of this, okay, we subtract 3 quarters from an inch and 3 8 okay, and that gives us 5 8 Now if we divide 5 8 by 2 because that's how much we want on each side, we get 5 16 so we set our fence 5 16 from the blade and make our pass and we're done. There we go. So let's make our cut. The next step is going to be to cut the taper in our frame so that the bottom half of the frame in the end bar is narrower than the top half. This will give, give your, your bees space to move between the bars, between the frame ends. So I'm going to show that to you now. It's done with the dado blade. The depth of the blade is going to be set to 5 30 seconds of an inch and we'll just send the board through, make passes, take a little bit out of each one or each pass and we'll flip it over and do it again. Uh, I'll show you guys that cut right now. Okay guys, for this cut we want to, on a, on, a, on a medium end bar, the taper starts two and five eighths from the top bar side of the end bar. So I've labeled this board uh, T and B. Of course, I can see what they are because one's wider than the other. But anyway, take the bottom bar side of your board, put it against your fence, and what you're going to do is use a ruler and measure, and you want to set the fence to where the, the outside edge of the blade is two and five eighths from the top side of your board, the, the top bar side of your stock. So we're going to set that up now. All right, there we go. A little hair more. 
All right, so two and five eighths. And you're going to set your depth to five thirty seconds of an inch. Remember to always unplug your power cord whenever you're adjusting your blade height. I've already done that. There we go. Plug us back in here. All right. Here in protection. Now let's make the cuts. focus in on this for you guys. Alright, so you can see what we're left, here, left with here is a perfect profile of a medium frame. Now all we have to do, refocus here, now all we have to do is set our fence to three eighths from the blade after we switch back to our regular uh, blade. We're not going to use a dado for this because you'd waste a bunch of wood, but you set your fence three eighths from your blade, put this against the fence and start passing it through, cutting this into three eighths inch thick slices and those are your end bars. We'll go ahead and get that done now and show you. Alright guys and girls, so as you can see we've set our fence 3 8 from the blade. We've switched out for a standard blade. Uh, we're using a 40, excuse me, I believe this is a 60 tooth blade. Uh, for, for you guys new to woodworking, the more blades you have, or the more cutting surfaces you have on, on the blade, uh, the smoother your cuts are going to be. That's how you don't get chip out doing, you know, intricate cuts. Uh, is by getting yourself a good 60 tooth saw blade to do finishing work. Um, if you're rough cutting, you know, a 20, a 20 tooth blade is fine, but you really want a 60 tooth blade for finishing work, especially when you're dealing with very thin pieces of wood um, that chip out very easily, like these uh, prongs on the bottom bar side of your frame end. Uh, they break easily, so you definitely want to use a, a good quality blade. Just a tip there for you. We're going to go ahead now and start making passes. 
through the blade, cutting off 3 8 inch slices at a time. Um, and we'll go ahead and get that done now for you. Just that quickly, we cut every one of these. Just out of that little piece of stock that we used, we've got enough frame ends for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and one flew that way. So sixteen frames. Uh, out of that little piece of stock can be made. And as you can see, they're all perfect. Okay? Three quarter groove in the bottom. Got your larger groove at the top for your top bars. All right, so this concludes our three part series on how to make Langstroth style frames using nothing but a table saw. It's the only tool we used in this entire process. This was part three of the video series, so if you've come to this video first on YouTube, Go to our channel, look up videos number one and two in this series for your top bars and your bottom bars. Uh, anybody uh, can make these with a little bit of practice uh, with nothing but a table saw. You don't need any special tools. I will say that this takes a fair bit longer than using a router, um, which is how I like to make frames with a router. Um, and, and I still do some work with the table saw too, but, but a router really, really helps. Um, uh, especially with these with these end bars, um, in my opinion. This, this is a, a pretty simple method too, but it is time consuming. Because of that, you don't want to make 10 of these at a time, okay? You want to you pick one of your Saturdays when you've got nothing better to do, your bees have been taken care of, and you've got time to, to really sit down and make a couple of hundred frames. Um, you can do 200 frames in a day easily uh, using this method. The trick is to make all of your top bars in, in one sitting, you know, get you some lunch, whatever, make all your bottom bars, which are the easiest of the three, and then make all of your end bars. Um, and, and so make, you know, 50 top bars, 50 bottom bars, and 100 end bars. That'll give you 50, 50 frames. Um, if you do these 10 at a time, you'll, you'll drive yourself crazy. Uh, anyway. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Again, visit us at funnybugbees.com. If you don't have the tools necessary or don't want to actually build these yourself, uh, we do sell them on our website. If you're here watching this video, and I know that you are, uh, you can use this coupon code right here to get 10% off frames at our website. I believe we sell them cheaper than any other online supplier, especially in the individual pricing category. So um, we're more than happy to help you guys out with a decent, a decent priced frame uh, that's quality constructed. Thank you for visiting, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.